in five, three, one. Proud Radicals! up to something. Uncle Norm is always up to something. Cool move. <laughs> Nothing to it. Kids, the most amazing thing happened. You'll never guess, not in a million years. Uh, you sent a ball flying over the clubhouse and it came back at you. Not even close. I sent a ball flying over the clubhouse and it came back at me. How do you do that? Okay, see, so what happened was Amazing. When... Right. Amazing. <laughs> hey, that's a, sort of a weird place to do your ironing, don't you think? Allow moi to demonstrate. Walk this way. Now, what you probably think you see here is an ordinary ironing board. Looks ordinary to me. Mm. And this may appear to be merely an ordinary stool. Yep, looks like an ordinary stool to me, too. <laughs> yep. Of course it does. The innocence of children. Don't you realize that sometimes things are not what they seem? Uh, what about that pile of stuff? Ah, well, that's just a pile of stuff. It's my friend Jack. So, uh, what exactly would this be? <laughs> I'm so glad you asked. Someone had to. This is my very own a teeter a totter. Allow moi to demonstrate. In you go, Jack. <laughs> now we know how all of that stuff got in the front lawn. What goes up must come down, and we don't want it to come down on anyone's head. And you know, a teeter-totter is mostly about balanced weights. Hey, you have a good point, Kevin. You know, I think I know just the person who can talk to us all about weights and balance. You know what, I'll give him a call and see if he can drop by. This, I gotta see. Hi, Elena. Hey, Don. Yeah, I gather Uncle Norman's got a bit of a problem. I do, Don. It turns out that I'm highly unbalanced. Uh, well, we know that, but uh, how can I help you? Well, Kevin and I are going to help make Uncle Norm a teeter-totter. A teeter-totter? Mm, so we figured we should talk to you, because you could probably tell us a lot about balance. Well, well, I'll try. A teeter-totter. Do you know, that's just like a scale. Like this scale. Mm -hmm. Mm. It's the same sort of principle. With a teeter-totter, you need a centre, like you do with a scale, okay. called the fulcrum. Fulcrum. And things have to weigh the same either side. So, mm -hmm. what's a fulcrum? The fulcrum is the centre about which the teeter-totter has to teeter. Because okay. it's... Or totter. Or totter. Yes. Now, you don't want it to go down too much on mm -hmm. one side. For instance, if the weight oh, is too much... That's a downer. Yeah. That's a downer indeed. Mm. And, but if you put another weight in the other side, Ooh. then it's balanced. Balanced out. So, you see, that's what you do with a scale, but that's what you need to do with a teeter-totter. You know, there are many other places where that whole principle of counterbalance and balance is so important. Really? It, Other places? Like, even, like where? Even in buildings. Oh, now, Don, I've never seen a building shaped like a teeter-totter. <laughs> You'd be surprised. Let me show you what I'm... I'm going to make a little model of a house. Ooh. OK, I'm going to have a, one wall and another wall, mm -hmm. and then there's a floor going across to the other side. Wow. OK. Now, suppose, suppose you wanted to have a, a balcony yes. so that you could go out on it. Well, that means that the floor's got a move out further. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it does mean it has to be counterbalanced because if I was to stand, if you were to stand on the end there, whoa, whoa. Oh, you'd fall, oh. you'd fall off your balcony. It would, it would tip over. It would go down. There's the fulcrum, uh -huh. just like a teeter-totter, mm -hmm. and that's going down. Now, you could have 
somebody standing on the other side, and that would be perfectly okay. Oh, I see. So anytime you get an apartment with a balcony, you always have to make sure you have a friend who will stand on the other side so you don't fall off, right? No, no, no. You don't have to worry about that at all, because all buildings are built such that they've got at least one more wall the other side, and so you not only could stand on there without hey. it tipping over, your friend could join you as well. We're finding a new way to weigh. Can you believe this is math? Finding a way to weigh! Well, I'm glad that helps you uh, restore your balance. Do you think it does? Yes, I feel highly balanced now. What do you guys think? Um, uh, well, uh, good luck with your teeter totter. Why don't we see what Kevin's up to in the clubhouse? Heavy your light, there's a way you can weigh it. Hey, check this out. It's pretty cool. We know that a teeter-totter is really fun to play with, but it's also a balance. The part we sit on is the lever, and if you want the lever to be even with or parallel to the ground, we need to have a counterweight. So the same weight is on both sides and we are balanced. This weightlifter is one strong dude, but look what happens when the weights on the ends of the barbell are not counterbalanced. The poor guy falls or teeters over. Oh, and I have a question for you. Which one is heavier? This one kilogram paperweight or this one kilogram of popcorn? That's right. One kilogram of popcorn weighs exactly the same as a one kilogram paperweight. So on a scale, they are even. The big difference between popcorn and a paperweight is that when you get hungry, you can eat the popcorn. Uncle Norm! Hey kids. Is that my popcorn? Ah, that, uh... <clears throat> that, 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 that was your, um, your popcorn. <laughs> I thought it was abandoned. I, uh, I, you, know, you really should put your name on these things, Alana. Okay, who's ready to make a teeter-totter? <gasps> we, we are! are... Ah! All right, then. Boy. We have everything we need. And back there, we have the lever. Now, that's going to act as our seat. Yes, and as you can see, we've already drawn a line through the middle of it. That's because we want to make sure we have the center of gravity when we place the lever on top of the fulcrum. Right, exactly in the center of the lever, so we know that we have the same distance on either end. Very important if you want to be balanced. Nobody likes to be unbalanced. Believe me, I know. Okay then, let's get to work. Screwdriver, uh... Okay. Wow, this is totally radically balancatious. Let's try it out, you guys. Sure. Hop on, Kevin. Okay. Okay, and... <gasps> ah, well, I think we need a little more counterbalance. Hop on, Alana. Sure. Okay. Now we're counterbalanced. Yeah, we have equal weight on both ends. And we're parallel to the ground. This is fulcrum tabulous. Now all I need to do is to find a counterweight so I can sit on it when I'm alone and be evenly balanced. While Uncle Norm is searching for his perfect counterweight, I'm gonna show you how to make a balance of your very own. You can balance things that weigh the same. Balancing them out, yeah, it's like a game. I'm gonna show you how you can make your own balance scale that you can use around your house. So what you'll need are two buckets that are exactly the same. That's really important some string, scissors, and a coat hanger. And you want to make sure that the hanger has these little hooks in them. Now, a plastic coat hanger is probably the best thing to use. So, we're going to need to make two pieces of string that are exactly the same length. So, I'm going to fold this long piece of string in half, and then cut it 
right there. Okay. I'm gonna tie each piece of string to the bucket and make a knot. I'm gonna make a loop on the top of each piece of string. So this is what the loop will look like. So now, we're gonna take the hanger and hook it onto this hook. Then we're gonna take the other loop and hook it onto the other hook, like that. Okay, so as you can see, this is gonna act as our fulcrum. And when we put a weight in this bucket, it's gonna act as our weight. And when we put a weight in the second bucket, that will be our counterweight. Okay, let's see how it works. Now it's really important that the two buckets are hanging at the exact same height. See, just like that. I hung mine on a coat rack, but you can use something else like a doorknob or anything around your house that's safe. Okay, now let's weigh. So I'm gonna take this paint and put it in the first bucket. And this is gonna act as our weight. Now let's find a counterweight to balance it out. How about this ball? Okay, let's see. Well, it looks like the paint weighs more than the ball. So we need to add more weight in the second bucket. How about a fish? Oh, the paint still looks heavier. So I'm gonna add two more fish. And look, they're perfectly even. And you just made a new way to weigh. Finding a way to weigh. Hey kids. Hey Uncle Norm. Uh, what's up Uncle Norm, other than you? Yeah, um, you're not quite evenly balanced. No, well, I was a bit off on guessing my counterweight, like not equal to my own weight, so I have a bit too many watermelons. You could feed the whole neighborhood using these watermelons, Uncle Norm. That is a great idea. Thanks. Yes, Kevin. Only one thing, guys. One thing, guys. We can invite the neighborhood to eat some of the watermelons so that they can level out Uncle Norm so he can be parallel to the ground. Okay? Uncle Norm and the watermelons are equally balanced. Yep. That was one heck of a way to weigh. Yeah. You can use the scale to weigh your socks. Though you can't counterweigh them with a few big rocks. But if you have a kilo of a pile of socks, the counterweight can be a kilo of rocks. If you want to weigh a whale, you're gonna need a giant scale. But if you want to weigh a ball, you're gonna need a scale that's small. Heavy or light, there's a way you can weigh it. Oh, heavy man. Ow! Hear me, kids, as I say that you could find a way to weigh. Have some fun, it's just like play. Well, find a way to weigh today. You can balance things that weigh the same. Five, three, one.